So whenever you have a really complex interview question, whenever you have an algorithm or some type of complex data structure that you don't know how to iterate through, one of the first places that you're going to reach is going to be the nested loop. And here's the thing about loops so that you can understand nested loops. Whatever type of data structure that you put in it will cause it to behave drastically different. So if you put a string into a loop, it will behave totally different is if you put an array into a loop. And the same thing goes for nested data structures, which are going to be what we're going to practice on today. A nested data structure is going to behave drastically different than just a regular array. So let's take an example here. Let's just say, instead of having this nested array up here, let's just say we go ahead and we make it a regular array. And whenever we iterate through this array, what's going to happen is the for loop's just going to go ahead and it's going to pick each one of these up, quote unquote, pick them up, and it's going to iterate through them. So it'll just iterate through them one at a time. But if you have a array like this, what's going to happen is it's going to essentially pick them up two at a time. If I could just describe it as one thing, it's going to go boop, it's gonna pick them up two at a time. And if you're iterating through an array, you don't want that. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make it nested. So this is what happens when you when you make it nested. What you what you do in here, and this is just kind of pseudocode hypothetical. We'll go into here and we're going to add another array. And we're going to call this J so that we don't get our variables mixed up. So we're going to go J and it's going to be the same exact, uh, we'll just say, um, we'll call this an array, just like this. So array.link. And for right now, don't worry too much about what exactly is going on. Just know that we are making it nested. So if we go in here and we add a nest to it, what's going to happen is it's going to pick them up and then it's going to iterate through them individually. So, so pick it up, it'll iterate through them individually, and then it's going to go to the next one and it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to pick it up and then it's going to iterate through them individually, just like this. So just imagine instead of each one going through and iterating through them, it's going to pick them up by the individual array, and then it's going to iterate through each individual one. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. Let's go ahead and VS Code, and let's actually practice a couple nested loops so that you can understand more what's going on. Okay, so we're just gonna take two for loops and put them inside of each other. This, this, These two loops being inside of each other makes no sense, but we are going to do it just to illustrate how nested for loops work, and then we'll make one where we actually iterate on something. So first one, remember, just easy, just having fun. If you break the nested array, it's not a big deal, but we're just gonna go into here and we're going to go ahead and make this. So just before you actually start putting in anything else, just take a look at your quote unquote, your settings inside of your for loop. So the I is going to make it so that we are starting at one and we are initializing the one. This is going to make it so that we are going to stop at 10. This is going to make it so that we're just going up by one each and every time. So let's go into here and let's console log this in the console. And we'll say this is going to be the outer loop. And while we're at it, we will go ahead here and we'll add our I as well too, so that we can see exactly how this for loop is working. So we go ahead, we run it. And as you can see, all this for loop is doing is it's counting to 10. But let's also just put another for loop inside of it and you can see exactly how this for loop is actually working. So we'll go into here and we're going to make one exactly the same and you can you can switch these numbers out if you want to. Don't be afraid to switch out the numbers. And we're going to give it the exact less than or equal sign. And we'll say, we'll start, we'll have this one stop at five. And then we'll go J plus plus, just like this. And we'll console log it. And we will say the outer loop. So this will be, this is going to be the inner loop. So we'll say inner loop is equal to this. And make sure we put a space there. And we'll say plus J, just like this. So what's gonna happen is you'll see exactly how this is going to work. So what will happen is that this loop will start and each loop in each iteration it goes through, it's going to have an inner loop. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't make sense. Won't they just iterate after, the, after each other? 
what's happening is that the first loop is iterating and then it's going to iterate through the inner loop. So this first one is going to iterate first. Then after this is when the second loop or the inner loop is going to go ahead and execute. And because there's not another nested for loop, this is going to just go ahead and execute. So let's see what happens if just for example's sake, we'll just put another loop in here. So J, we'll call this L is equal to one and we're going to give it the exact same thing. So we'll say L is less than or equal to, let's say three, we'll make it a little bit less so that it's not gonna go crazy and we'll say, plus then we'll go down here and we'll call this inner inner loop so inner inner loop and what you will see is that it's going to execute but it's going to execute so that there's an inner inner loop and as you can see it's starting to get crazy i probably wouldn't go through any more than that so we're just going to go ahead we're going to take out that extra inner loop right there and we'll just keep it down to this one and hopefully that illustrates the picture pretty clearly for you it's a little bit of a mind bender, but let's go ahead and let's move on to good old arrays. So first we'll go into here and I'm going to make this a array of airplanes. Just I'm in a mood for airplanes today and I'm going to separate them out by actual passenger jets. And then I'm going to make one for fighter jets. So I'm going to go into here. This is going to be the 777. This will be the DC 10. This will be the bombardier. And those are great passenger jets. <laughs> then we're going to make some with our, these are going to be private jets. These are going to be like private jet names instead of passenger jet. We'll make these ones private jets just to kind of mix these up and we'll have the Gulf stream shout out to Grant Cardone. So we'll have a Gulf stream right here and we have a array full of passenger jets and private jets right here. Okay, so let's figure out how we're going to actually iterate through these. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create our first for loop that's going to iterate through this one and then this one. So we're gonna go through here. It's going to essentially iterate through them by rows. So we'll go I is equal to zero and we'll say airplanes. We'll give this dot length and then we'll just set a good old increment by one. So the I plus plus means that we're going to increment by one. Then what we will do is we'll go ahead and make our row. So we're the first for loop we're going to go through and we're going to get each individual row. We could just leave it uh, like this. We could just throw this one into the next actual for loop that we are going to make. And I'll show you how we can do that. But I'm going to separate it out because I think it looks a little bit better when you have this right here. You don't have to have this. I'll show you how to do it without it if you don't want to. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go J. So we'll go J and it's going to be less than the row dot the length. And as I mentioned before, you could just go into here and just add this like that. But I think it looks a little bit better when we have the actual row in there. So we'll go rows dot length. Then we'll increment this by one. So we'll say J plus plus. And then we'll go into here and we're going to console log the actual row and this is going to be the J, and this is going to print out each individual airplane by itself. So as you can see, it's iterating through each and every single one. So go ahead and get that uh, comment out of there. And it's iterating through each individual one. And if we had it before, watch what would happen if we didn't have this and you just kind of naively went through and just console logged everything just like this. What would happen is that you would just get these arrays back and you wouldn't be able to iterate through them individually. So if you went through here and tried to iterate through it, it would look like total doo-doo and it wouldn't be able to be shown on the web page until we made it so that there's an actual nested for loop in there so that we could get to these actual values right here. And that is pretty much the whole entire idea behind nested for loops. You just have to get the concept. Once you get the concept, it's not complicated at all. And they're actually pretty easy to do. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.